The greatest engineers of all time were once seen as dumb because they were slow in class and they lacked formal education. But it was those exact same engineers who revolutionized industrial engineering, electrical engineering, aerospace engineering, and all the other countless fields of engineering out there. Even I myself have failed multiple times, yet I've gotten to the point where I've built personal projects on my own, provided mechanical design services for clients, and landed internships way easier than anyone else in my class. So I know, I just know for a fact that no matter how smart you are, you can succeed in engineering. Have you ever failed an engineering exam before? Felt that terrible feeling of logging into the university portal and then just crossing your fingers hoping that you pass. But then you look down and see that horrible, disgustingly low mark. I know that feeling. Shamefully, I do know that feeling because it was in my third year of engineering where I failed my first ever exam. It was during midterm season and I had to study for this one class that I underestimated. And you might be thinking, oh, it must be a complicated one if it was your first exam that you failed, right? It must be like fluid mechanics, maybe thermodynamics, maybe systems and control. Nah, it, it wasn't complicated at all. It was economics class. But before you laugh at me, before you laugh at me, just listen to my story, okay? So there I was, third year engineering Aaron, studying for his midterm that he had coming up. And he only studied for one day. He underestimated this class. Economics, psh, that's what he was thinking. So he walked into the exam hall. He wrote the exam. And in the middle of the exam, the teacher reminds everyone that the multiple choice section is negative marking. Negative marking. I'm like, hmm, hmm, should I answer this? I answered them anyway, despite the fact that I understudied. And that was a terrible decision. A week later, I log into my university portal and I see that low mark that low fucking mark of 16%, 16. I go from not failing an exam at all, ever, for three years of studying engineering, to getting a 16%, one six. Holy shit. That is the definition of failure, right? Anyone in that situation would call themselves dumb. But what I haven't said at this point is the reason that I didn't study enough. Of course I underestimated it, but there was another reason. It was because I was doing real engineering work for clients, personal clients that I've achieved through my other YouTube channel that I was growing at the time. The channel where I made projects on my own and showed my creativity and showed my engineering skills Throughout this experience of working with this client, I learned how to talk to customers. I learned how to use my CAD skills to help customers. And I learned how to provide real world solutions to real world problems. Now, let me ask you a question. Who do you think learned a higher leverage skill at that time period? The hundreds of other students who passed that economics exam or me who was doing real engineering work? and developing real engineering skills? I think the answer is quite clear. Now in the short term, on paper, I look dumber than everyone, getting a 16% in an economics class. Holy shit, right? Anyone else would think that I was dumb if they looked at my mark. But what they didn't see behind the scenes was me doing real engineering work, taking initiative to develop my career while these other students were studying for this cute little economics class. But in the long term, I developed way more engineering skills than they have in that single time period of studying for a midterm exam. And the best part is that that experience that I had working with clients didn't require me to use any complex theoretical knowledge like Navier-Stokes equation, Bernoulli's equation, or trying to solve for the triple integral of two ass cheeks. Because real engineering is built off of the skills you learn not the piece of paper that says a a a a a not the GPA that's perfect and says 4.0. And if you want further proof, look at any job posting out there or any internship posting out there for an engineering student. You won't see any of them want someone with a perfect GPA. So to start off, I recommend that you make your own personal projects. Take initiative to develop your engineering skills, your real engineering skills, not just the theoretical skills that you learn in class, which by the way is important. I still want you to pass those classes in university because you obviously need them to uh, get your degree. But I'm saying do other things. Don't just essentialize the classes that you have in university because those things, everyone has that nowadays. You're not gonna stand out to an engineering recruiter if you do that. So the action step that I want you to take 
is to make personal projects and they don't even have to be that big the ones that i made weren't that big either so just start off small and you could uh, step up the complexity of it later and if you need help with that and you have questions of like oh what kind of projects should i make then check the link in the description because i do coaching and i help people who have these types of questions I want to start off by saying that your engineering degree is the safest path to take to become an engineer. But with that being said, it's not the only way to become an engineer because majority, majority of the greatest engineers of all time didn't have an engineering degree. The Wright brothers, they didn't even have a high school degree, yet they invented the airplane, the airplane that takes us places around the world so that we can take vacations and see our family halfway across the fucking globe. And then there's Thomas Edison, who was seen as stupid by his teachers, and yet he invented thousands of things later in his career. Thousands of things that developed humanity to where it is today. And then there was Henry Ford, the man who was literally defined as dumb by everyone around him because he lacked a university degree, let alone an engineering degree. And he even lacked a high school degree. He dropped out at 15 years old. But also at 15 years old, he made his very first steam engine by hand using scraps, literal scraps. After that, he went on to make other things like quadricycles by hand. Quadricycles were the cars of his time. And he also made other pieces of machinery. And with this mind of his, he revolutionized the future of industrial engineering. He shaped the industrial engineering field that we know today. After he started the Ford company that we all know and love, when he was making the Model T, which was popping off, he managed to lessen the time to make the Model T car from 12 hours to 90 minutes. 12 hours to 90 minutes. Holy shit, that sure sounds like engineering to me. Even if he has no degree, if he, even if he has no high school diploma, he was an engineer. So before you go into the comments and say, oh, Henry Ford wasn't an engineer, he was a businessman. I'm fucking sick of it, okay? Here's the definition of an engineer. A person who designs, builds, or maintains machines, structures, or systems. Recognize that not a single place in there it says that you need an engineering degree to become an engineer. You don't need to be smart to become an engineer. As I've, as I've stated time and again for the past uh, fucking what seven minutes who you are is what makes an engineer craft makes an engineer not certification heart makes an engineer not smarts the things that you do to help humanity defines you as an engineer not the amount of money that you make in it now to end this video off you might have clicked on my video that i made here because you think you're dumb and that you might have lost some hope for your career as an engineer because you failed thermodynamics, you failed calc 2, or you failed statics class. The majority of people in university isn't going to remember what they learned, you know that, right? Like, can you remember what you learned in uh, four months ago? That one concept in that one class? Can you remember a single thing of that? No. So why would you remember that 20 years down the line when you're working as a professional engineer. Just because you failed all of these classes, just because you got a low more mark in all of these classes, doesn't mean that you're not built for engineering. Because there are infinite engineering roles out there, literally countless of different roles. We got project management, we got hardware engineering, we got controls engineering, we got uh, structural engineering, we got environmental engineering. I could go on and on and on and fucking on. Do you really think that engineering is not for you if there are countless of roles that you could work in? Like for example, if you suck at coding, maybe look into becoming a project engineer, project manager, or being a field engineer or something. Those are just three of many positions where you don't have to use coding. If you suck at electrical concepts, like you hated electromagnetism and waves class, then don't join a, a role that aligns with that. Join something like mechanical design or aerospace if you suck at electrical stuff. This goes for anything. If you suck at control systems, I am sure I hated control systems. So uh, you might want to go into QA engineering or materials engineering. Once again, these are just few of many, many different positions out there. Choose the career that is perfect for you. 
Okay, I truly believe that nobody on this fucking planet, nobody on the planet of Earth is dumb, completely dumb, just bad at everything that they do. Everyone has something that they're good at. So if you're good at uh, this certain skill in engineering, like you're a really good uh, CAD modeler, then go into mechanical design. If you're really good at uh, material science, then become a material science, material scientist engineer okay so if you need help with your uh, career development as an engineering student i'm in the same shoes as you i'm a third year mechanical engineering my student myself i've built all of these projects on my own i've worked with clients across the world and i've gotten internships i've worked in the engineering industry i know the steps that you need to take okay check the links in the description i can help you out i'll see you later